India is, uh, for the last uh, few years, is going through a very turbulent period in our social and political life. From toxic air quality to that toxic political quality, which is where we are today, this is what uh, made it of interest to us also to look at what's happening in the arena of hate crimes, essentially, where people are being killed or violence being used against specifically communities and persons because of their identity. There is no doubt to an impartial observer today compared to maybe a year and a half ago that this is a problem uh, that is uh, widespread across our country, uh, that there is an unprecedented kind of dispersed heat violence uh, happening in different parts of the country. But we don't know the facts, we don't know exactly the numbers, what is happening, where is it happening. And, and we don't know the numbers, and the fact that we don't know the numbers, how many incidents, what motivated the incidents, uh, 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 what, what triggered, uh, what were the communities involved, uh, what did the police do afterward. Uh, this kind of data is something that actually the state should compile and place before us. I have handled violence in Punjab when terrorism was at peak and I questioned Mr. Gill's methods and I became a controversial person. I've been in the Northeast for a number of years. And I always felt that this violence, the terrorist violence, insurgent violence, this violence has its own anatomy. This violence has its own constitution. It's not ordinary crime. And our inability to diagnose this violence, which arises essentially from the apathy of the government, insensitivity of the system, it is in complaints, not heard, complaints repeatedly rejected, not addressing grievances, that is what leads to that. And we have been seeking military solution to problems which are essentially civil in nature and political in nature. The most important thing in religion-based hate crime is not the identity of the victim. It's not important who the victim is. Therefore, we are actually agnostic to the religious identity of the victim or the perpetrator. What is important for the category of religion-based hate crime is the question of motivation. He just then brought out a report where they did a quick scan of how related violence uh, since 2010. And uh, what the figures that they brought before us, which was just cow related violence, reported in the English language press. And we found that 97% uh, of uh, these incidents had happened after 2014. 86% of the people killed in cow related violence were Muslim and 8% were Dalit. Uh, these were striking facts and I think people began to slowly recognize reluctantly often uh, that they are being confronted with something uh, which is not ordinarily law and order breakdown. Half of the hate crimes, 66%, uh, more than half, were reported from states run by the BJP. 15% um, were reported in Congress run states. Um, and uh, I think more than a third of the cases involved attackers allegedly affiliated to uh, right-wing groups inspired by Hindutva. The Bajan that was particularly uh, evident in all these uh, attacks. Religion-based hate crime is any crime that prima facie on the face of it reflects a motivation, partly or wholly which is motivated by hatred, bias, prejudice or hostility towards the religious identity, whether perceived or actual religious identity of the victim last couple of years, I've been feeling very much agitated and upset over this problem. And it's a pity that the National Time Record Bureau does not record it. It should not only be recorded, it must be recorded as a separate category of crime. Because murder from hate crime, rape from hate crime, assault from hate crime are different from normal murder, assault and rape. Because hate crime not only means assault of our body and property, it means an assault of our freedoms. 
It's a threat to the very fact of to, to rule of law. It is a, it, it's a challenge to our core constitutional values. That is the enormity of that which needs to be appreciated.